Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners for the month of March of 2019. The Board of Commissioners did meet in executive session from 6.45 to 7 p.m. this evening to discuss a number of personnel-related uh, matters. I would now ask our Township Manager and Secretary to please call the roll. Certainly. Mr. D'Amelio? Here. Mr. Oliva? Here. Mr. McCluskey? Here. Mr. Siegel? Here. Mr. McGarrity? Here. <clears throat> Dr. Hart? Here. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Holmes? Here. And Mr. Lewis? Here. Larry? You'd all please rise and join our Chief of Police, John Viola, in the Pledge of Allegiance. Item number two on the agenda is proclamations. Um, we were going to give a proclamation to Kathleen Patricia Riley, a centenarian, who celebrated her 100th birthday in February. And I got an email this afternoon from her son and said that because a number of her relatives could not attend, that they requested that we postpone the proclamation presentation until our April 8th meeting. And obviously anything to accommodate someone that can reach the age of 100. So, second proclamation this evening is to Richard Doc Doherty, and I would ask uh, our seventh ward commissioner and chair of the Public Works Committee, Jim McGarity, to join me in this presentation. Sorry, Doc, you have to come forward. Doc, can you I stand? Know, Doc. I, I know stand? that anyone that knows Doc well knows that he would much prefer to be working with one of his crew members filling a pothole than standing right here. That's right. There's no doubt. Is that true? That's true. <laughs> so Doc has been with us for over 35 years, um, the last nine years as our public works director, overseeing our second largest uh, piece of the budget. $15 million, second only to the police department. Uh, and he's been a great steward and a great leader of a very um, efficient and well-run team. So we are in debt of gratitude for, uh, to Doc for all his work and efforts over the last 35 years. I've asked Commissioner McGarity, who is the seventh ward commissioner, who's in his seventh term and his 28th year as a commissioner, um, to and also chair of the Public Works Committee of the Board of Commissioners for tw probably 25 of the last 28 years to uh, present this proclamation to, 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 uh, to okay. Doc Doherty. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. I have to make sure I do this right. My wife's right here watching me. And uh, I got Terry over here watching me. So uh, whereas the Board of... And, oh, let me just say... My fellow commissioners, every one of them behind me, all love Doc. We all, we're all going to miss Doc. And I'm speaking not just for myself, but for the entire board and past commissioners. Fair. Whereas the Board of Commissioners, the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, wish to recognize Richard Doherty upon his retirement from the Township of Haverford. Whereas Richard, Richard Doherty, known to all of us as Doc, became employed by Haverford Township in October 1983 as a vehicle maintenance mechanic. At that time, there were approximately 150 vehicles that required continual repair. And whereas Doc worked his way up to the position of the Public Works Directors in 2010 and currently has an operating Public Works Director budget of $15,668,889. The township fleet currently has 193 vehicles. Doc is responsible for sanitation, highway, sewers, 
tree, and vehicle maintenance department while attending meetings with township commissioners, major utility companies, and residents, and whereas Doc always 24-7 with Haverford Township is often awakened in the middle of the night for sewer backups, accidents, downed trees, and help his department, believe it or not, plow snow. He enjoys going to fine restaurants, the movies, vacationing at bed and breakfast with his wife, Terry. Doc also is an award-winning race car driver. And whereas on a personal level, Doc is a loyal employee as well as a devoted son, a supportive husband, father and grandfather, a true gentleman, unselfish to the cores of his being. What do you need? And Doc's answer was, you got it. Are Doc's favorite lines. These words exemplify the man Richard Doherty is and the kind of devoted service he has provided Haverford Township during his past 36 years. Now be it proclaimed by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford that Richard Doc Doherty will leave beautiful memories in the hearts of our Haverford Township family, and he is part of the family, and our blessings go with you as you enter into a well-deserved retirement. Proclaim this 11th day of March 2019, the Township of Haverford, Andy Lewis, President, James E. McGarrity, Chair of Public Works, and the entire Board of Commissioners, and all of the employees of Harvard Township, and especially Public Works employees. Thank you. I want to say one thing real quick, and I learned a long time ago that a boss is only as good as the men that work for him. Those guys back there, I want you to stand up. That's who deserves a round of applause. These are the guys that are on call. These are the guys that are on call 24-7, and they have never let me down. They go to the end of the earth for me. And that's what makes a good boss, the people that are under him. And I got the best. I would put this crew against anybody else. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next proclamation is to Larry Gentilly. And I'd ask Larry to join us as well as the former presidents. So like, uh, like, like Doc, Larry doesn't enjoy the limelight, <laughs> to say the least. I think he, uh, if he had to have his pick, he'd rather be meeting with the auditors. <laughs> right <now. laughs> Is that true? We'll see how we make out tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, Larry's been uh, at roles with the township over the last 40 years, um, and has been township manager. Uh, for, since uh, acting township manager since 2007, and he became township manager in 2008, and he's overseen a $45 million budget, which is a very significant operation, and uh, very frugally, I might add. Uh, he's the only one I know that will lock a refrigerator, <laughs> literally lock the refrigerator. <laughs> so we're indebted to, to Larry for his stewardship uh, over the township resources, all of us as taxpayers. I thought it would be appropriate for all of all the former presidents who had the privilege of working with Larry over the years, um, including a former president from First Ward, Steve D'Amelio, who served from 2005 to 2007, uh, former, our former president and Ninth Ward Commissioner Bill Wexler, who served from 2008 to 2012 and again in 2018. Uh, Commissioner from the second ward, Mario Oliva, who served as president from 2013 to 2015, and former Commissioner Chris Connell, 
uh, from the Eighth Ward, who served as president from 2016 to 2017. And then there's me, low man on the totem pole. I've only had the privilege of working with Larry for two months. So, um, but, so I'd like to read start and then have others join, join in, in presenting this proclamation. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Hereford County of Delaware Commonwealth of Pennsylvania wish to recognize and honor Lawrence J. Gentilly, Jr. Whereas Hereford Township was privileged to initially employ Larry Gentilly in 1979 as a paramedic within the Township's Pilot Advanced Life Support Program. In 1981, the program became a joint venture with the Haverford Community Hospital, where Larry served as Director of Paramedics. In 2002, the paramedic program returned as a Township Managed Program. During this period, many notable events occurred, including the first 12-lead ECG transmission from the field to a hospital on the East Coast as well as the establishment of paramedics fully integrated into a municipal SWAT team. Larry remained in the EMS director's position, earned his bachelor's degree from Newman University, and was promoted to assistant township manager in 2006. Larry, in 2007, became acting township manager, and in 2008 was promoted to township manager, as well as township emergency manager coordinator and... Whereas during his tenure, Larry has worked with five presidents of the Board of Commissioners and currently oversees 232 civilian personnel and 69 non-civilian personnel with an operating budget of $44,919,379, a population of 49,000 residents and 132 miles of township and 33.7 miles of state roads. He oversaw emergency operations through numerous weather events, including four major hurricanes, and nine blizzards, as well as three nursing home evacuations. Larry's oversight included emergency operations for the 2013 U.S. Open at Marion. Whereas during the above time periods, Larry also served as flight paramedic for, combi for a combined 30 years with Hahnemann University medevac helicopter and the University of Pennsylvania Penn Star helicopter. He was selected to function as a tactical paramedic for the Federal Bureau of Investigations SWAT team, where he served for 11 years. And? and my, my whereases are a little rusty, but I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll get them. Whereas, Larry married his high school sweetheart, Judy, shortly after their graduation. Together, they raised a daughter and a son. Today, Larry and Judy devote much of their time with their family spoiling their four granddaughters. As an outdoorsman, Larry spent downtime unwinding on tranquil lakes fishing and in the peaceful woods gaming. Now, on his retirement, he can return to the passion of the outdoors with his family and his friends alike, reminiscing on the past and teaching the next generation the skills of nature. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners and the Township residents wish to thank Larry Gentilly for his courageous spirit, leadership, and the many worthwhile initiatives which were established under his leadership that proved to be winners for all residents and visitors. Proclaim this 11th day of March, 2019, Township of Hereford Board of Commissioners, signed by Stephen D'Amelio, President, former President, William Wexler, former President, Mary Oliva, former President, Chris Connell, former President, and myself, and obviously with the support of the entire board. So congratulations, Larry. I know you better. Picture with the proclamation. Yeah. Oh, sure. You got a picture first. Okay. You're in the middle, Larry. Right. Oh, always. <laughs> He's always in the He's middle. He's in the middle. All right. Thank, thank you. you. I'll just say a few words. Um, uh, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, I sincerely appreciate it. As you said, I get you know I got an early start here, um, just as a paramedic. 
Well, I've been blessed. As Doc said, you can't say it any better. You're truly you're only as good as the people work for you. And I've been blessed to, to have so many good people um, within the, uh, the ranks and, and the senior leadership that actually made me look good. You know, over the, uh, over the years, as I learned, um, the, the board has supported me and um, to give me an opportunity to learn a job and be successful in it. If it wasn't for uh, the support of the staff and the elected officials to be able to do the things that we do um, to, to provide a better service and to make Haverford Township a better uh, you know, place to live for the community, without their support, none of that would happen. Um, and it's been, uh, we've been blessed. Uh, I know when I go home at the end of the month, when I'm all done, we've made Haverford Township a better place. It's incredible what this board and past members of the board, Mrs. Hall, I know Chris is here, um, Tom Broido, um, Mr. Trumbull, and Mr. Heilman, they're all other commissioners I worked under. They all supported anything that, that uh, unique, new brine programs, all the things that we wanted to do to change the township. Uh, so that has made my, my job uh, uh, easy. And you know, during, during the, the years as a manager, sometimes you need to make very unpopular um, uh, decisions. And they, you know, change is not, uh, doesn't come easy. Um, and from the fire companies to the police department to public works, everybody is, is, is supported me regardless how difficult those, those decisions were at some time. So I won't forget you. It's, it's not goodbye. It's just see you later. Um, so you give again. Give us your cell phone number? No. <laughs> <laughs> In 60 days. <laughs> By that time, you'll forget about me. But thank you all. Appreciate it. Take a few minutes to take a few pictures, okay? You want to get all the commissioners down? On that. Get them out of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to stay. Eight. Oh, the Doc. Go, Doc. Take your sign. We're going to take you out and get some pictures. We'll continue with the, uh, we'll continue with the agenda. Item, item number three, uh, appointments. We have three, two appointments to consider. One is the position of acting township manager, and the second is position of acting public works director. And the third action to be taken tonight is to temporarily, temporarily allow the acting township manager and the assistant township manager to manage the affairs of the township and to make disbursements until a township manager is in place. So I would now entertain a motion for 3A. Mr. Lewis. Is that Ms. Mr. Wexler? Make a motion to appoint Amy Cuthbertson, CPA, Assistant Township Manager, as Acting Township Manager, effective April 1st, 2019. Second. Second. Oh. Seconded by Mr. Hart. Moved by Mr. Wexler, second by Mr. Hart. Is there any discussion? Any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Absolutely. We're in very good hands. <laughs> Second, uh, 3A, motion to appoint an acting. A uh, motion to appoint Township Manager's appointment of Daniel Mariani, Vehicle Maintenance Superintendent as Acting Public Works Director, effective April 1st, 2019. Second. Seconded by Mr. Oliva. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Lewis? Yes. State your name. Dan Mariani, uh, Acting Public Works Director. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just wanted to thank the board for the opportunity um, taking on this new role. As Commissioner Lewis said, it's a uh, trying job, 24 hours a day, 
great group of guys. Looking forward to it. Accept the challenge. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. You can always tell they work. Congratulations, <laughs> Amy. Congratulations, Amy. Amy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now entertain a motion for 3C. Mr. President. Mr. Holmes. Mr. President, I move that we temporarily allow the active township manager and assistant township manager to assist all, I'm sorry, to sign all checks for disbursement until a permanent township manager is appointed. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Siegel. Any discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Lewis? Yes. Item, agenda item number four is uh, commissioner committee updates. Are there any commissioner committee updates? Um, I think, yeah. You want to give, uh, want to come up, you want us to come up and do this real fast? Yeah, I just want one other thing first. Yeah. Um, as a, it's not really a committee update, but considering how many calls I've already received, and I know my colleagues have, to, at least today, we've started to receive notices from a company called Tyler Technologies, which are the notices about the reassessment. Tyler Technologies, they'll send out a letter that indicates on the top Tyler Technologies with the county seal. That is the proper company who is performing the reassessment process for Delaware County. So you should read those letters. If there's information that is not accurate, please make certain that you correct it. There's a whole process listed there. But if you receive a letter from Tyler Technologies, that is valid. They are the company performing the work, so you can feel comfortable with that. It should be a letter, not phone calls, no one at your door, a letter addressed that has all of the relevant homeowner information on it. So I just wanted to sort of a public announcement. Thank you, Commissioner Siegel. Any, uh, are there any commissioner committee updates? Um, Commissioner DeMilio? Well, I mean, do we want to give the update yeah. for our meeting uh, with the state representatives and the state senator on the 476 Westchester Pike corridor? I think it makes sense to do it now. You want to do it other business? Yeah. Other business? Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. I'm going to go up here for now, let's do it under other business if you don't mind. Let's do it under other business, other business yeah. That's fine. Okay, no problem. That's okay. Um, are there any commissioner committee updates? One brief. The property committee um, met last week uh, to address uh, issues relating to the uh, township, the former township building and the Brookline School following the vote to accept acquisition from the township. Um, we are doing some preliminary investigation in terms of uh, evaluating the uh, township building property, including uh, getting um, an estimate of its value and some preliminary information to see if there is a feasibility of even considering the library at the Brookline site, but it's all preliminary. Once we have more information, I'll report back. Now, thank you, Commissioner Siegel. Any other Commissioner Committee updates? Item number five on the agenda, Township Auditor Update. I understand uh, Ross Anderson is not feeling well and that Commissioner Holmes will might fill in for him this evening. Do you yeah, have, I'm do you have a joke? To, I'm happy to fill in, I do. Um, <laughs> so um, first and foremost, uh, I can report that Mr. Anderson went through all uh, the entire uh, check register and the warrants that, uh, uh, that we will be considering for approval tonight. Um, any questions that he had? were answered to his satisfaction by our township staff, in particular by Finance Director Cuthbert and Acting Township Manager Cuthbertson. And um, uh, he did ask that some invoices be um, uh, postponed till next month, that he could examine them more closely, and uh, that uh, request was complied with. Um, and with the news of Bryce Harper arriving in Philadelphia, it has answered the age-old question, just how much money do you have to pay someone to voluntarily move to Philadelphia? And we have an answer. That was on Saturday night. Yeah, I know. Okay, thank um, you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. 
Agenda item number six is the Citizens Forum. We have 20 minutes allotted for registered speakers and also 20 minutes allotted for anyone that would like to speak on an agenda item. We do have three registered, registered speakers this evening. Uh, the first is Hannah Turlish. Turn this around. Yeah, do we want to, oh, do you want to turn? I'm sorry, let me turn I, it yeah, around. Yeah, I think it was my turn. <laughs> It's, it's yeah, heavy. No, no, no. It's not that easy. Larry has to come back every month to do this. I'm not going to tell him. Yes. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, what it is, it's all the wires come out of the ground onto a swivel plate. And there you go. That's right. There you go. Right. Thank you. Thanks. So if you could. Just introduce yourself and your address. Sure. Thank you. And try to limit your comments to two minutes, if you would, All please. Right. Thank you. Three Good minutes. evening, commissioners. Oh, I'm sorry, three minutes. No, three minutes, okay. I can do that. Good evening, Thank commissioners. You. Thank you for your time tonight and for all the good work that you do for our township. My name is Hannah Turlish. I live at 412 Mill Road in Havertown, and I am running to be the next 7th Ward Commissioner. I speak tonight about a vital issue for the working families of this township. And it is at the forefront of my mind because of an experience that I had with hundreds of other parents last week. Registration for the 2019-2020 school year for after school care at Haverford Township's five elementary schools opened at 9.30 a.m. last Monday. I have a son in first grade at Chestnut Old Elementary. And I knew from previous experience that we would not get a spot if I did not line up early. I arrived at the Family Support Services offices at 8.15, and I was about 20th in line. After a very cold hour and 15 minute wait, the line began to move. There were hundreds, approximately 300 by my site estimate, hundreds of moms and dads behind me, all with visible signs of stress and worry on their faces. And most of them, like me, had taken time away from work so that their kids would be eligible for before or after care, which is a necessary part of childcare in any household with two working parents. I share this story to frame a commendation and a request. I commend the work that this group has done with the school board, connecting and seeking ways to form a collaborative relationship to maintain and further improve the excellent education that our schools provide. I also request that this group be forward thinking about the need for quality and affordable before and after school care for elementary age children. Starting conversations with stakeholders to brainstorm and problem solve would be a great first step to address an issue that is getting more and more stressful for families with each passing year. With citizen engagement and partnership with the school board, I am hopeful that this group of hardworking commissioners can help to generate innovative, excuse me, innovative ideas for the future. I would be happy to share further thoughts and to help problem solve with fellow residents, you as commissioners, and the school board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next um, is Jane Hall, former third ward commissioner. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies, ladies, thank you, all of you. I just came tonight for a couple of moments just to share my sentiments and thanks to Larry Gentili and to Doc. Uh, I had the distinct privilege and pleasure of working with Larry Gentili when I was commissioner. I had no idea the complicated and intricate details of running a municipality. I thank you for your service to this community. I thank you for your kindness and caring and consistency with me when I was starting and knew nothing and called you endlessly and Amy and everybody else, Lori too, especially. I'd like to thank you for your guidance when I was commissioner, especially during the US Open. I'd like to thank you for your guidance when uh, I had some moments that were not that pleasurable as a commissioner, and I always knew that I could count on you. I felt like you always listened to my questions. You never thought anything I asked you was unnecessary or uncalled for, and you always gave me great answers. 
I also appreciate your passion, particularly when we were in executive session and you said something really needed to be addressed. I found it fascinating to see, look around the room at all the reactions when our uh, fearless leader would walk in fearless. He truly would walk in fearless and give us all of that. Just very important information in order to make educated decisions. You care deeply about this township and you've worked every day toward making this township better. Uh, you, from a very, very detailed budget every year to one of my very favorite things, beautification. And I will tell you, Larry, that there is not a morning that I drive past the intersection of Haverford and Ardmore Avenue, which I do every day to work, that I do not look at that Charlie Brown tree and think of you. <laughs> and I appreciate it truly from the bottom of my heart. There is not a day that I take people out and tour this township that I don't tell them about the 35 years that I've lived here and how far it's come. And a lot of that has to do with you and your staff and the Board of Commissioners and so much, all the good things that have happened over the last decade plus. Your passion has always inspired me. It always will. Most of all, I think that we all come into positions and we hope that we can dedicate ourselves and do something really, really good and walk away leaving something better than when we arrived. That's always our goal. You have certainly done that in many, many ways and with uh, just superstar quality, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So thank you. I wish you all the best with your family. You have a beautiful family. Enjoy every moment. And know that we appreciate everything you've done for this township. I'd like to say just a couple words about Doc. I know he's not here. No, he's in the back. Is he, Doc? Yep. Well, I just have to tell you that you've been amazing. You again, like is so many in this township, treated me with such uh, respect and kindness when I was commissioner and since. And whenever I've called you about anything, you've always, always answered and been right there and done everything for me from, you know, can you replace the stop sign to telling me, you know, the details about some wiring last year when I called him from a real estate project where I really needed to understand something about some Pico wiring. I thank you for everything you've done and your kindness toward me and to all of us in this township and your dedication has just been unbelievable. I'd also like to tell your team, although they've left, that you know we do wake up in the middle of the night and we do hear those snow plows and we thank those guys for being there. And when I see them you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday morning doing all that really heavy lifting and, and they wave to all of us, you know, that's really unbelievable dedication to our community. So that's from your leadership, and I thank you. And I have to tell you one quick story before I say goodbye. Uh, when I first moved here, I was 25 years old. And I went down to our entrance at Marion Golf Manor and uh, started complaining already about things. And the stop sign was crooked. And there was a public works guy there, and I pulled over my car, and I said, you know, do you think you could straighten that stop sign? It just really bothers me. And he looked at me and said, lady, if I straightened every stop sign in the township, I'd never get anything done. <laughs> and I said, okay, I guess that's my answer. So I think things have changed since I was 25 um, for all of us. And thank you for straightening the stop signs when I asked and painting this the street signs when I asked and all those lovely things that you do. I wish you all the best, both of you Godspeed, good health, and know that you made a difference in my life and I appreciate that. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hall. Third and final registered speaker this evening is Jean Angel. I'm honest. Hello, my name is Jean Angel and I'm the Executive Director of Haverford Partnership for Economic Development, or HPD, and this is Don Kelly, Hi, he's President of our Board. We asked to speak tonight to thank Larry Gentile and Richard Doherty for their fine service to Haverford Township and their support of HPD. Larry, I know you don't like to be singled out, but during your tenure, an amazing transformation has occurred in our township. The impact of several huge development projects, Haverford Reserve, the YMCA, the Quarry Center, and the new township building cannot be overstated. You've also sought and received numerous state grants to revitalize many of our older business districts with new lighting and sidewalks as well as improvements to our parking lots. 
You've initiated several gardens along Darby Road and Westchester Pike that really brighten up the township. And you've supported other initiatives such as tree tenders in the rain garden and Haverford Green programs. Finally, you've been instrumental in HPD's, HPD's partnership <coughs> with the township and in the success of our work over the past several years. Since I've been working for HPD, you've supported our work and treated me with kindness and respect. Your support, that seems like a common theme. Mm -hmm. Your support for our projects to improve our public spaces, the planters, the gardens, signage, fountains, and most recently the walkway has been much appreciated. For those that don't know, we dedicated the fountain in the Triangle Garden to Larry last year and we installed a plaque to that effect. Your work has significantly enhanced the economic vitality and the quality of life in our community. All of us at HPD are grateful for your service and proud of everything you've accomplished. We hope you enjoy your well-deserved retirement. Please accept this gift as a token of our thanks. <laughs> Not that. Go get your new, go get your keys, Larry. Your new car. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Or just fl flip myself around to talk to Don. No, come on up. Come on up, Doc. Yeah, yeah, one more, one more thing to uh, endure. You don't have to come. You, you sit up here. Yeah, just sit on the. Just get yourself up. <laughs> Doc, you and I have worked closely on many projects over the years, and your support has been invaluable. As coordinator of the tree tender program, over the past ten years, I've relied on public works to pick up the trees, dig holes, make PA one calls, and field phone calls from residents. Numerous HPD projects have also required your support, including placing over 90 planters, some of which weigh hundreds of pounds each. <laughs> You've also managed the installation of the raised gardens and the median planters on Darby Road, picked up and delivered materials for us, installed benches, trash cans, and signs. Throughout these past 10 years, you've been a pleasure to work with. In all that time, you never gave me a hard time, you were always cheerful, and I never once heard you say a bad word about anyone. Although a couple of times you did confide in me, Jean, I hate trees. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoy your well-deserved retirement. I'm glad to hear that you want to stay active in the community by volunteering with the Historical Society. I'm sure that they can keep you busy, but now that you're no longer responsible for tree care in the township, I'm hoping I can convert you to be a tree tender as well. <laughs> I'll let you know when the next tree planting is. I'll let you know. <laughs> Thank you again for your kindness and generosity and also for your support of HPD. Use this gift to celebrate a lifetime of excellent work. HPD also would like to recognize Mario Oliva for his contributions to beautifying our community, enhancing economic growth in the township, and his support of HPD as he's recently stepped down from our board. Mario brings passion, commitment, a knack of getting things done, and a willingness to get his hands dirty to every project that he works on. I worked closely with Mario on the Lantern Crossing Park project, and I could not have done it without his immense help. Next, he and I co-founded the Haverford Tree Tender Program in 2009. Mario suggested that we set the lofty goal of planting 1,000 trees, which seemed like a monumental task. At this time, we planted over 1,400. Mario was instrumental in the development of Freedom Playground, taking a week off from work to serve as build captain. He's been a consistent volunteer at events in the township, from the music festival to touch a truck, from, home, from the home and garden show to the heritage festival. He's worked on roofing the federal school, on trail building, on park improvements, and on planting projects in the business districts. In addition, Mario was the driving force in forging an effective partnership between HPD and the township. During Mario's tenure as board member, HBD has become a healthy and strong nonprofit organization that's making a positive difference in the township. We could not have done this without Mario's advocacy and leadership. He's been a very active board member, serving on the Home and Garden Show Committee and heading the streetscaping initiatives. Mario, thank you so much for your service to HBD and to the township as a whole. Please accept this as a thank you for your work. You want to read that? Yeah.
This certificate of recognition is presented to Mario Oliva. Haverford Partnership for Economic Development recognizes Mario Oliva for his work as a commissioner, community volunteer, and HBD board member, which has impacted the quality of life and economic development of Haverford Township in meaningful and significant ways. His passion, hard work, and dedication to his community over the past 10 years has been exceptional. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, Don. <laughs> He's not used okay. to that. I'm sorry, I'm just very surprised. <laughs> very, very surprised. Well deserved. Wow. Uh, I'm really surprised. I don't know what to say. Um, thank you, guys. I really, it was, uh, I, I enjoy. I don't know which way to go here. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed working with Gene and with Don and with the whole group. Um, had a lot of fun. Um, things have uh, changed a little bit, so um, I needed to step down. So I wanted, um, I, I still support uh, the HPD and, and what you guys do. Uh, and I thank you so much for this. I can't, uh, I really can't thank you in much. I'm just, I don't know what to say. I'm just very, very surprised. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to address uh, Hannah Turlish's comments, um, I actually had, a, uh, my wife and I had the same experience at Cooperstown uh, this past year uh, when our daughter, who's in fifth grade, did not get in the early uh, program before school. So uh, I ended up being with her for the first hour until an opening did occur uh, about a month later. So I, I share your frustration. I think it's a frustration of a lot of parents. Um, you know, my when I was uh, looking at it from parents' perspective, I was my question was why uh, FSS um, and Elwin, which are the preschool program um, for our school district, why they're not expanding the program within the schools and simply just adding an additional room or adding an additional staff member. It just seems like that's the easy thing to do. And it's better to have those kind of programs at the school, I think, than rather than in a, in a secondary location. So um, we certainly can do things with the zoning. Um, it is allowed in institutional zoning, um, uh, an accessory use in a school or a church, and it's also allowed in a C2 commercial district. We can look at possibly expanding that into other commercial districts. You know, it seems to me that the that the that if there is a demand, the um, that, that somebody should step forward and satisfy that demand somehow. But I think the first, the first um, partner should be the school district, and we'd be happy to partner with them in any way we can to make, uh, you know, child care uh, more and early childhood education opportunities available to as many kids as possible. So uh, we'll certainly do our best to, to aid uh, to aid in that regard. So thank you for your comments, uh, Jane. Uh, Jane Hall, well articulated, and and uh, couldn't say. Could say it any better, uh, and certainly well-deserved comments to both Doc and to Larry, and to Gene Angel and Don. Uh, thank you for your recognition of Larry and Doc and Mario as well. So we appreciate appreciate it very much. So thanks for being here. So now we'll turn our attention to um, continuation of the Citizens Forum. Uh, we have 20 minutes allotted for anyone in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item. If it's not agenda related, um, we'll have an opportunity to, to do that later. So is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item? Okay, thank you. We'll now turn to item number seven, the approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman. Mr. D'Amelio. I'd like to make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of February 11th, 2019. Second. Seconded by Commissioner McGarity. Any questions or discussions or edits? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Ayes carry, thank you. Item number eight, approval of the warrants. Commissioner, Vice President Holmes. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. <clears throat> I move that we approve warrant number three of 2019, totaling $3,183,314.37 comprising the general sewer fund payroll for February 21st, 2019, in the amount of $716,802.77, 
general sewer fund payroll for March 7, 2019, in the amount of $657,691.57, general fund disbursements number three of 2019, in the amount of $1,038,612.72, sewer fund disbursement number three, of 2019 in the amount of $581,447.20, Community Development Block Grant Fund Disbursement Number 3 of 2019 in the amount of $91,167.09, Capital Project Fund Disbursement Number 3 of 2019 in the amount of $90,775.90, and the credit card statement ending February 27, 2019 in the amount of $6,817.12. Second. Seconded by Mr. Siegel. Any questions or discussion? Well, as we heard secondhand, uh, Mr. Anderson has been through these warrants and any questions that he's raised have been answered to his satisfaction. Um, he has recommended that these warrants be approved, as do I, and uh, that's all I have. We'll just have a voice vote. Hall in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye, Scary. Thank you. Item number nine, ordinance number P5, 2019, property maintenance code, second reading. Mr. President, I make a motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P5, 2019, amending and supplementing chapter 58, building construction, article one, building code, section 58 2, paragraph B, additions, deletions, and modifications, and article two, property maintenance code. Section 58-3, paragraph A, adoption of standards, modification of standards. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Hart. Second reading, Mr. Celia was here last week and explained we're catching up to the national and state building codes uh, by updating our codes. Any uh, discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 10, ordinance number P6, 2019, traffic first reading. A motion to adopt the first reading of ordinance P6, 2019, authorizing traffic restrictions on the following highways. Sticker parking only. It says amending. Sticker parking only, which currently restricts parking on the west side of Beverly Road between Mill Road and Goff Road on school days 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. To read Beverly Road west side between Mill Road and Goff Road school days 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. A valid permit exempt. Second. And E is Park Road south side between Darby Road and Lansdowne Road residential parking only. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Oliva. Any discussion, any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? No. And Mr. Lewis? Yes. Agenda item number 11, resolution number 2126-2019, preliminary final minor subdivision 217 Walnut Hill Lane. Mr. Chairman. Mr. D'Amelio. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 2126-2019, the preliminary slash final minor subdivision plan for Fredador Penn LLC for the property located at 217 Walnut Hill Lane, Havertown, Haverford Township, Delaware County and known as DC folio number 22-09-02562-00, has been submitted to permit the subdivision of the existing 21,250 square foot lot to create two lots as follows. Lot one containing 7,500 square feet, lot two containing 14,750 square feet. Per the zoning hearing board case Z-18-31, the applicant has received a variance from the saw yard setback requirements for lot one. The subject property is zoned R4, low to medium residential district, <coughs> and is located in the first ward. The aforesaid plans were prepared by Herbert McCombie, Jr., PE Consulting Engineers and Surveyors, 
Incorporated Broomall PA dated uh, September 20th, 2018. Second. Second to vote, Mr. McGarity. Any discussion or any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Lewis? Yes. Agenda item number 12, resolution number 2127-2019, transfer of 2018 funds. Mr. Motion to adopt resolution number 2127-2019, authorizing the transfer of 2018 funds. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Is there any discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Agenda item number 13, resolution number 2128-2019, preliminary final minor subdivision, 1200 Elston Road. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 2128-2019, approving the preliminary final minor subdivision plan for Ormond Properties LLC, the applicant, for the property located at 1200 Elston Road, Hanford Township, Delaware County, and known as DC Folio number 22-09-00730-00, has been submitted to permit the subdivision of the existing 15,878 square foot parcel to create two lots as follows. Lot one is proposed to be 9,723 square feet and lot two is proposed to be 6,154 square feet. The existing dwelling and associated walkways on lot one are proposed to remain and a new single family dwelling is proposed for lot two. Additionally, four new parking spaces are proposed for lot one. A seepage bed is proposed on each lot for stormwater management. The subject property is zoned R4, low medium residential and is located in the ninth ward. The aforesaid plans were prepared by Catania Engineering Associates, Millmont Park, Pennsylvania, dated October 2nd, 2018, and last revised February 8th, 2019, subject to compliance of the Planning Commission recommendations. Second. Second by Commissioner Hart. Is there any discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Weaver? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. McGarry? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Lewis? Yes. Agenda item number 14, resolution number 2129-2019, uh, preliminary mi uh, final minor subdivision for 1417 Fairview Avenue. Mr. President, make a motion to adopt resolution number 2129-2019, <laughs> approving the preliminary final minor subdivision plan for Ormond Properties LLC, the applicant, for the property located at 1417 Fairview Avenue, Halford Township, Delaware County, and known as DC Folio number 22-09-00877-00, has been submitted to permit the subdivision of the existing 42,000 square foot parcel to create two lots as follows. Lot one is proposed to be 25,500 square feet, and lot two is proposed to be 16,500 square feet. The existing dwelling, garage, and driveway are proposed to be demolished, and a new single-family dwelling on each lot is proposed. A seepage bed is proposed on each lot for stormwater management. The subject property is zoned R4, low to medium residential, and is located in the Ninth Ward. The aforesaid plans were prepared by Catania Engineering Associates, Millmont Park, Pennsylvania, dated November 27, 2018, and last revised February 13, 2019, subject to compliance with the Planning Commission recommendations. Second. Again, seconded by Commissioner Hart. Any questions or discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Lewis? Yes. Agenda item number 15, we have two uh, Purchases to consider, uh, both of which are going to help uh, reduce our carbon footprint, and both were uh, initiated by um, our Environmental Advisory Committee in conjunction with our staff, and we thank them for their hard work and efforts, and the first item for consideration is the Scadium. 
Uh, Mr. President, uh, motion to authorize the purchase and installation of 55 new LED high bay luminar with wire guard light fixtures at the stadium <coughs> for Miller Lighting and Energy Incorporated, Newtown, Pennsylvania, in the amount of $19,975. Cost will be further offset with an anticipated PICO energy rebate in the amount of $4,125 for a net cost of $15,850. Second. Second by Commissioner McGarity. Any questions or discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Lewis? Yes. The second is a uh, EAC, Environmental Advisory Committee initiative, uh, to propose to purchase four electric vehicle charging stations, which would be located up in the upper corner of our municipal um, parking lot. Mr. President, uh, motion to authorize the purchase and installation of one CT4000 level two dual port charging station and one CPF25 level two dual port charging stations from Charge Point Incorporated of Campbell, California in the amount of 17,000 $734. Cost will be offset with driving PA forward rebates and a bonus uh, incentive from PICO. Second. Second by Commissioner McGarity. Any question or discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Agenda item number 16 is appointments uh, to the Senior Citizens Advisory Board uh, in Ward 1, Commissioner D'Amelio, and Ward 8, Commissioner Hart. We have. I'm going to have to table mine, please. Table yours, Commissioner Hart. Point Elias Cohen. I'm sorry. Elias yes. Cohen. Present for you. E L I A S C A C O A G N. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. Uh, also under agenda item number 16 is Shade Tree Commission. We did have a resignation. So we have uh, an, to fill an unexpired five-year term. Uh, there were two candidates that we interviewed and it's uh, up to the board whether we want to put these names forward or table. Um, two names, we, were in, the resumes were in your packet, uh, the work session packet last week. Uh, Mr. President, a motion to appoint Brian Herlinger to fill an unexpired five-year term on the Shade Tree Commission prior to December 31st, 2022. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Holmes. I apologize. Could, could you repeat? Brian Herlinger. H-E-R-L-I-N-G-E-R. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Holmes, second that? I did. Yeah. Are there any other nominations? <clears throat> motion to close. I have a motion to close. I have a second. Motion to close. Second. Second to my Commissioner Siegel. All in favor of closing nominations? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, please call the roll. Brian Erlinger. Thank you. Brian Erlinger. Brian Erlinger. <laughs> Mr. Siegel. Brian Erlinger. Mr. McGarity. I told you. <laughs> Dr. Hart. Brian Erlinger. Mr. Wexler. Brian Herlinger. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Herlinger. And Mr. Lewis. Mr. Herlinger as well. Congratulations to Mr. Herlinger. Item number 17 is a continuation of the Citizens Forum for non-agenda items. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to any non-agenda item? Okay, see none. Uh, new business. Um, any new business or do we want to go to, you want to do your presentation under new business or other business? I think it really matters. Other business. Okay, other business. Okay, any new business? Okay. We under other business, business, Commissioner D'Amelio, I think Commissioner Siegel want to give us an update on the Route yeah. 3 Westchester Pike uh, hmm. corridor project. Yeah, I, for purposes of clarity, I think it is worth noting <laughs> new business implies that we would present and act on something, okay. whereas I think presentations like this belong in other business. Sure. Um, 
As many of you know, um, this is uh, a process that started, I think, a couple years ago, maybe even a, over a year and a half ago, uh, when Commissioner Siegel and I attended Marple uh, Township's um, uh, planning commission meeting regarding the um, development at Westchester Pike in 476. Oh, thank you. Can't leave. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh yeah. So um, when we when we attended that meeting, we discovered the uh, the magnitude of the uh, project and the effect it was it's going to have on Haverford Township and the traffic in uh, the first and the fourth and the second ward specifically. As many of you know, in the mornings how how bad the traffic backs up and nothing's been done along that uh, along that corridor except for trying to calm the traffic with adapters for the lights. Uh, we've had several meetings, and we had one as recently as um, Thursday, wasn't it? This Friday, Friday with the uh, state representative, uh, state senator, Dale Leach, uh, state representative Mike Zabel was there, as, long as, uh, as well as uh, state representative Greg Vitale, members of PennDOT, Dave Pannoni, uh, the police, uh, public works, public works and Larry Gentile. And Tony Hamaday, that's right. Tony was there, the township manager for Marple. And I'm gonna pass this on to Dan to uh, review what we discussed there. Yeah, what we, what we did and what we've created here is Mr. Pinotti had um, done the mock-up. And in fact, although this is going to be a PennDOT project, the township has taken the lead we've actually authorized Mr. Pannoni to do the work to diagram what is the proposed uh, reconstruction of the Blue Route Interchange with Lawrence Road. This uh, drawing over here, where the photograph shows the proposed revisions, which would create a dedicated on-ramp or a lane onto the Blue Route going north without having to stop at Lawrence Road, redirect the traffic and the engineers, the police all believe that this will help relieve a lot of the stress. It won't fix it all, and it says it's the first phase or the short-term improvements. Uh, the next step will be to, again, request in the state budget for next year, and this time it, the, the estimate is only $3 million, but a $3 million allocation to uh, perform this road work um, which you could see creates the additional dedicated lane onto the Blue Route, moves the traffic from South Lawrence Road, which is the marble portion, onto a newly created ramp further, just slightly further west on Westchester Pike. Um, but it would really help alleviate the stress because of the environmental factors, everything that's impacted by this. So we will have another meeting. But you know, literally everyone was at this meeting. We also had Delaware County Planning Commission. Uh, it, it, it was well attended and very productive. Yeah, I just, I just want to add, so uh, when you're coming down Westchester Pike, you will continually the, uh, feed right onto the Blue Route going northbound out towards Plymouth Meeting. So the traffic which normally backs up because of that uh, will now continuously flow right on, on to Plymouth Medium. Because that's a dedicated lane, it will constantly flow out. And uh, so we're hoping that that will take care of the problem. Uh, coming, you know, the traffic backing up as far as Manoa Road on some days. Well, one other thing about that project, I mean, once you get into that lane, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, you cannot get out. Cannot get out. So once you're going on the 476, there's no merging. You can't merge in and you can't merge out as they do now. You can't do that, but a little bit past that, there's going to be another on-ramp, sort of, with a yield there. To, so if you miss that exit, there is another one, which Commissioner Oliva is going to point out. This is the dedicated lane. There'll be a Jersey barrier here. Those cement barriers will be, will be along here, uh, going up to Lawrence Road. And then uh, you'll, have a, you'll have a, so when the traffic is coming out of uh, Lawrence Road, uh, coming down from Brumal, uh, you're going to come out. And then instead of going on to this, Ramp, you will continue down and go on to this lane here. So, yeah. Also, anybody who doesn't make it into this lane can still go into this lane here and make it back onto the northbound. It's up to the governor to get us some money, and we're hoping that he does. Dave, do you want to add anything to this? Are we missing anything? No, nah, nope. I think you covered it pretty good. Okay. 
And when did they say our next meeting is? Uh, I think it's in about, a month in the about a month, maybe, or six weeks we're going to meet again. I think they're still lobbying the state. They're still lobbying the governor. The budget's coming up. And uh, so that's one of the reasons why we're pushing for this rather quickly, because the budget's coming up. I think they, they informed us that they have to finalize the budget at the end of April, Dan? Is that right? June. 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 Thank you. June. June 30th. June 30th. So we're moving. We're trying to move fast with this. So. Yes, thank you. Taking this with you, Larry, when you leave? <laughs> Thanks for that, Emily. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioners. So now I'll turn to um, individual commissioner updates, Commissioner D'Amelio. Uh, I just want a couple of things. Uh, thank everyone who attended the first ward meeting in February, a well attended meeting, and thanks to Mike, State Representative Mike Zabel that uh, attended the meeting as well. It was very uh, gracious of him to attend. And, uh, and thank you to Larry Gentile who attended his last first ward community meeting. And thank you to the police for showing up as well and providing updates on what had occurred in February with the shooting in Westgate, and I thank you for taking the time out to answer many of the residents' questions. They certainly appreciate it. I've received a lot of emails saying um, how, how much they uh, they thanked you guys for being there. Larry, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm going to miss you tremendously. You've been such a big help. I mean, there's really, I can't reiterate with what everyone said about you, but you've been such a huge help to me. Uh, in the first ward, and uh, it, w it was a pleasure knowing you. I got to know you f from the day I started uh, getting involved in the township. I recognized quickly your leadership ability, uh, how, how well you were respected in, in the paramedic program when you ran that, how well you ran that, um, just your organizational skills, your dedication, uh, it, it, I just, I'm in awe of you, and, and um, I don't say things unless I mean them. I am going to really, really miss you tremendously. I, I, I want to thank Doc as well. I mean, he was a tremendous help to, to all of us and, and um, did, made the Public Works Department so much better than what it is or was. Um, and I agree with what former Commissioner Jane Hall said about the, uh, the stop sign. I had similar uh, issues, and uh, it's certainly not that way today. But um, and we've lost some good people here, but we have good people in the township, and we, we hope to have uh, recruit more good people, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll be calling uh, Amy on her cell phone now. <laughs> what cell phone? Are you available on Sundays, by the way? No, no, she's not. Anyway, thank you, Larry, and, and I wish you all the best that life has to offer. You deserve it. You and your family deserve it, so thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so I, I too, want to, um, first of all, I want to thank the HPD for, for this award. Uh, I was not expecting anything tonight, uh, but I really do appreciate it. Uh, Jean, Don, um, rest of the board, uh, and Jane Hall, who got involved, uh, and, and the other commissioners here who have supported a lot of the initiatives that, that Gene talked about. Um, so thank you very much, and, and, uh, and um, I'm, I was just glad to be part of, of what we did there. Um, as for uh, Larry, I, I really don't know what to say. Um, over the years, he's been not just a, um, a resource uh, for us, uh, but he has been a friend, um, a guy who I really um, would, who would tell me the truth when I was wrong, um, when, I was, when I was going a little too far, um, would put me in my place and would, uh, you know, did the right thing uh, for the township. He really is a hardworking individual um, who cares so much about, about what he does and about the people in the township and about doing a good job. Um, the, um, 
the amount of time he spent um, nights, weekends, um, you know, uh, in certain situations, you would call him um, late or uh, on the weekends, and he would always respond very quickly and would take care of whatever was going on, but, you know, whatever we, we would have going on. So um, I <clears throat> really appreciate everything you did for, for this township. Um, you, you really are not just a hardworking guy, but just a good person, really just a good person who really cares about people. So thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Amy. Um, um, I'm glad glad you're here, um, <laughs> we have your and I'm um, I'm glad you'll be the the uh, you know you're going to stay on as uh, uh, you'll you'll be the manager uh, for the next couple of months um, till the the new manager comes on. So really appreciate all your hard work in the whole process of uh, steering us in the right direction um, for the for our new manager and your work. I mean you've really gone above and beyond. Uh, what our expectations were for you. Um, as for Doc, uh, Doc has been incredible. Over the years, anything. Um, you know, uh, in the middle of the night, snow, somebody calls. Uh, I got snow here, snow there. Uh, we need to get this done, and, and Doc would take care of it. Um, just never worried about public works at all. Um, he really had everything under control there, has just put the uh, people in place around him, um, and now he's leaving, and uh, Danny's gonna take pla uh, his place, and he's gonna do a great job. He really, Doc uh, surrounded himself with some really good people down there, so uh, did a great job, and not just not just during his tenure, but uh, for a long time, we're gonna feel the effects of Doc and, uh, and, and his good work, so. With that, I... Um, just briefly before I echo some of the comments of my colleagues, uh, we were unfortunately snowed out uh, last month with the scheduled PennDOT meeting uh, that we had regarding the construction of the Ardmore Avenue Bridge. Um, we have gotten all the participants together. And, uh, we have a rescheduled date of April 10th at 7 o'clock in this room. It's a Wednesday night. Um, PennDOT will be here, all the same participants. The police will be here, uh, myself, Commissioner Siegel, and Commissioner Lewis. Uh, and I guess Larry will not be here, but uh, you know we'll have we'll have representatives from the township uh, uh, present answer any questions, um, and hopefully we'll get some more insight from PennDOT as to uh, the process that they're going to take, the expectations of time, uh, and detours, which I'm sure many people are, are interested in. Another event uh, I just wanted to uh, plug: uh, tickets are on sale for uh, HADA Haverford Alliance for Drug Awareness is. Uh, annual comedy fundraiser. It takes place at the Trinity Christian Church on Mill Road. Um, it's on April 13th at 7 o'clock. Uh, and this year, uh, they're stepping up a little bit and it will feature Joe Conklin. And uh, what? Dot com. Joe Conklin. Joe well, the person will be there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the city all stars of comedy. Um, so it, it, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a nice, it's a nice night, good fundraiser for a good cause. Um, and hopefully you can make it. Uh, and just allow me uh, briefly to echo comments of many here. Uh, Larry, on, on behalf of myself uh, and residents of the Third Ward and Hereford Township in general, thank you for all the hard work that you've put in over m many years. Um, one thing I was thinking about, what to, what to say tonight, uh, Doc and Larry both shared uh, two qualities that I think uh, have shown through both throughout the town and just in the experience uh, that I've had on this board, and that's, they both shared the quality that they cared deeply about uh, Hereford Township, and, and they both had immense pride in, in, in the work that they did. Uh, they were not in it for accolades, they were in it to make sure uh, that they did a job well done, and they were doing a job well done uh, for the community that they cared about. Um, and we are grateful for that, and uh, we will certainly miss it. Thank you, Kev. Mr. Siegel. Thank you. Um, first, uh, just some dates. Uh, the Paddock Farm Civic Association annual meeting will be on March 14th at J.D. McGillicuddy's at uh, 7.30. Uh, Commissioner McCluskey, Commissioner Hart, and I will be holding our joint constituent meeting in this room on March 20th. That's next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, turning to Doc and Larry. 
what, what Doc said really embodies uh, what both Larry and Doc did and their staffs. When, if you ever come to a constituent meeting, you'll hear me say that I look good or we look good only because the staff makes us look good, whether it's the administration, public works, and everyone says we have the best services around, the police, um, you know, we have an incredibly professional force. That all is because of the leadership of Larry, Doc, and, and others. And that's a hugely important factor because while Larry can be a little heated, generally speaking, oh. his leadership is, is... Did you say Larry's heated? Yes. Oh, man. And um, I, I, said two he can more, be. I still oh, have can two be. weeks to discipline them over there, don't I? Uh, <laughs> uh, but the reality is that you, know, you, you have always handled your role in a manner that is respectful and seeks to address issues. You and I first met when I raised a complaint long before I had any inkling I would ever be running, let alone being on this board in 2007. And you immediately recognized that there was a mistake or an oversight. It was corrected. And it led me to respect you greatly for how you handled it and have handled similar issues. Um, since then, and that we're talking about 12 years now, that I've worked with you. Uh, then I joined this board. Um, I came on at an odd, unusual time uh, where I was new in the middle of a year, and you shepherded me through the early months so I knew what was happening, what I could expect, and, and allowed me to feel like I was part of the board and part of the township. And I thank you for that. And you've continued. You do that with me or Jane or anyone who's new, um, and it, it's it's something that's important because coming up to this board, you don't realize what you're encountering, whether it's the you know the inevitable complaints, you know when are we going to pave Eagle Road, or the issues that come up on a, a, a daily basis with someone didn't pick up my trash or they stole my recycling can, uh, you name it. You Doc have always been there, and, and you've supported us. And you, you've, you've, you know, helped me and made me look good because if you're not there to support me or the police or public works, we can't do it. And that's a quality of leadership that's very important and not always easy when you have demanding uh, residents and others. So I thank you, I thank Doc, and I thank all of the staff. You know, we, we have a superb staff and you insisted on that um, and it, it shows in our finances, it shows in every aspect of how this township has grown and has really put itself on the map. So I thank you. Thank you, Dan. Mr. McGarry. Okay, well, Larry and Doc, I'm not, I'm not gonna say any more. I said it all out there. Larry's been great to places like Niter Hall, uh, the Grange Estate, the library. I mean, he's done a lot funded a lot of money, sent it their way, and that's why we're successful today in Haverford Township. Certainly, uh, they're gonna be a hard act to follow because of the work that they put in, and their heart was in Haverford Township. Other than that, now I, I wanna say that Tyler Technologies, what Dan Siegel was talking about earlier, are the people working for the people in media about your uh, reassessments. They sent this letter out and basically on the letter, I want to read one thing they do say here, is after you read the parts of what they say you have, it says, you need not reply if information is correct. Just so everybody knows that. If the info is correct, you need not reply and send this back in. Uh, so that's basically, uh, that's all I have to thank. Oh, wait a minute, the Kevin Kane, because of our next regular commissioner's meeting, it'll be Kevin Kane will be after that. So uh, that is the week before Easter. It's on April the 7th. Kevin Kane uh, Cancer Run will be at Annunciation Church starting at 3 p.m. Thank you. Mr. Hart. Larry and Doc, um, as the new guy on the block, I can echo Jane Hall's words. I really made the transition for me very helpful. I, I really appreciate everything you did. Um, it hasn't been helping, not that there's not more to be done. 
Um, and uh, I appreciate your passion for the township and docs as well. I mean, you're just tremendously committed and it shows. Thank you, Dr. Um, just briefly, I'll just echo that we, um, the third, fourth and eighth board meeting is, will be a uh, week from Wednesday, March 20th at 7 p.m. in the township building. And for all those uh, who celebrate St. Patrick's Day Sunday, um, have a great day. All right, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wexler. And from the Ninth Ward, uh, <clears throat> we'll do this uh, public service announcement first. On Sonday, April 7th at 12.30 at the Bonaire Fire Hall, Hilltop Civic Association will have their annual Easter egg hunt. It's a limited event, so please go on their website, hilltopcivic.org and register for that. It's always a great event. Usually have a couple of hundred, maybe three, four hundred kids. And it's just a, it's just a great event. Uh, I'll just add my comments about uh, Larry and, and Doc as well. Uh, everybody said they're sad to see you go. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm happy that you're going to be able to retire. I'm happy that you're getting out. You're young enough to enjoy it, enjoy your grandchildren. Um, and the reason I'm not sad is I look at you two guys. You're the best leaders that I've seen here in the township for a number of years. And the true mark of leadership is how you develop the people coming from behind you. It's a very unselfish way to go. It's, it's extremely evident with Doc, with all the supervisor he, supervisors he has down there. When, when Terry Heenan left, I thought we were gonna take a big hit on the tree group, but the next guy stepped right in. He was trained by Doc, and we didn't miss a beat. I think Amy's gonna be a great interim township manager until we hire a new one. Uh, I'm disappointed that she didn't wanna take the job, but she's probably smarter than we all knew. Uh, but she's going to be here 40 more years. Maybe she'll get another shot at it. But, but really, the true mark of a leader is how you prepare those other people. Uh, you have two vastly different styles of leadership. I don't think I've ever heard Doc use a curse word, but I admire your tenacity in trying not to use one in a sentence. <laughs> so, uh, but you've prepared everybody behind you to, to take over. I don't think you know we'll, we'll miss a step, but we're not going to miss a beat because because of your leadership and what you've trained the others to do. So uh, I wish you good luck and, and happy retirement. I know Terry's got a lot of plans for Doc. I'm sure your wife and grandchildren got a lot of plans for you. But, so go enjoy them. We're just passing through, but I'm, I'm happy for you. So good luck. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Thank, you. Thank you, Commissioner Wexford. Commissioner Holmes. Um, <clears throat> First, Scadium had a very successful event this weekend, well received, a, um, a t terrific uh, regional and really the whole Eastern Seaboard uh, competition uh, in figure skating at the, uh, at the Scadium Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And by all uh, measures, I understand it was, a, uh, it was a big success and certainly showed off the township well. Um, anybody who's known me for all these years on this board knows how um, hard I've tried to get to the center of this table um, the drawback to that is I have to come up with something about these guys now that everybody hasn't already said, and Jane stole most of what I was going to say. Um, but I, I would say this about, well, first of all, Amy, um, a lot of us are happy that you're taking over acting township manager. Nobody more happier than our auditors, our bond insurers, or the entire public market. So I just want to say thank you for stepping up for the temporary role that, uh, that you're going to be playing. It, uh, it thwarts my, my goal, of course, which was um, I couldn't get rid of Larry soon enough because I was really looking forward to having a township manager that I could boss around, but that, um, that's not going to happen now or in the future. Um, Doc's, Doc's work in the Public Works Department, it just in my short time in Haverford Township, so significantly changed the delivery of services to our people. And the best way that I could describe it is the way that a professional athlete can make their sport look so easy to somebody who doesn't have any idea what's really involved in doing it. And the, the delivery of township services became seamless and became matter of fact. And you only have to spend one morning watching, let alone maybe accompanying the guys in public works and the work they have to do, the people of public works, to recognize how hard that is while at the same time they're doing that incredibly physically demanding job, they are dealing with people who aren't always as appreciative as they should be of the work that's being provided on their behalf. Doc really professionalized, took great pride, as people said, in the work that the Public Works Department did 
He obviously shared that pride with the people who worked for him, who were proud to work for him. And as he made very clear to us, he was proud to be somebody who was called their leader. So um, it's really just great um, to have Doc as long as we did. And I am sad to see him go, but I do know uh, that we're going to stay in good hands. Um, Larry, just today, I called Larry about something, and Larry said, is, after I finished the 22 things I asked him, he said, is that, is that all you need? He said, uh, that, that's easy. And then I thought, geez, I should have asked Larry for a lot more uh, all these years. Um, because he just, um, Larry, uh, I, I, will, I, I will miss having you here in the township. Um, and I will say this, say this from the bottom of my heart. The, we are, we are measured at the end of our lives as to whether or not the world is a better place for us having been in it. Um, and that could be a very cold and sterile question asked. And uh, you can be satisfied knowing right now that your, uh, that your work here um, made this township and made the world a better place. It has been my privilege to, to work with you and to call you our township manager. And, uh, uh, and I hope we can ever be half as lucky as we were for these years under your leadership. So thank you very much for your dedication to everybody in this town. It was obvious um, to, to everybody who lived in this town that there was a new pride in the delivery of our services and at the helm, somebody very proud to do it. So thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Commissioner Holmes. Um, I would just like to follow up on an issue I raised at last month's meeting uh, with regard to the Ardmore Avenue Ridge Reconstruction Project, and Commissioner Pluskey and, and Commissioner Singel and I will be hosting a public meeting, but um, one of the outcomes of the pre-construction meeting that I attended was a discovery that the, um, the intersection of Hereford Road and Ardmore Avenue would not be upgraded. Um, and my assumption all along was that it would be, that it was part of the project, and PennDOT did not include that as part of the project. So that means no adaptive traffic signal, that means no upgrading of the pedestrian crosswalks. These are things I think that need to be done at that intersection, and it makes perfect sense that they be done simultaneous with the bridge closing. So I think with Commissioner Siegel and Commissioner McCluskey and I will be working, I've already reached out to uh, Commissioner, I mean to um, State Representative Vitale and Senator Leach, and we'll also be trying to reach uh, uh, the PennDOT Secretary about this issue like we did with the, the sidewalk on Fallage Avenue. She intervened on our behalf and we got a sidewalk. But uh, I think we need to press upon uh, PennDOT the importance of, ha of upgrading that intersection completely because there are a lot of people that use that intersection across to access the, the Norristown high speed line. So um, I think we all have to work collectively to put apply the appropriate amount of pressure on PennDOT to, to do that work. And I know in working, talking with Larry that we are going to apply or have applied or Dave's going to apply for an adaptive traffic signal for that intersection. So um, hopefully we can get PennDOT and, and the support of our police to, to, uh, to go forward and press to get the crosswalks and the, sig the proper signaling there for, the, for crosswalks as well. So, um, so I, there's not much I can add to what's been said about Larry. Do you have a big head, Larry? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you might tonight, after tonight. But. Uh, one of the quotes I'm just looking on the internet is just one of the quotes is um, some people are indispensable, but no one is irreplaceable. I have to say, Larry, you come pretty darn close. So um, anyway, so thank you for your service, Larry. Uh, I'd like to, Commissioner uh, 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 Jane Hall's comment about being fear, fearless, and he certainly is fearless. Um, he, he would be quick to tell you when he didn't think you were right, and he always had the interest of the taxpayers at heart. So thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Is there any other business? Any other comments that anybody else wants to make? Yeah, what happened here? Not, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for all the kind words. The next two weeks, I'll be have the opportunity to come and see you personally. Um, so I'm not done this evening. Um, if I were to thank everyone tonight, we wouldn't have enough time. Um, but Chris, thank you um, for coming tonight. I don't know if too many people know about it, but if it wasn't for Mr. O'Connell, I wouldn't be here uh, uh, sitting in this position because uh, back in the era of mid-70s, uh, Chris uh, convinced me to apply and, uh, for the position here through the CETA program become a paramedic. Who would have thought that uh, 
that I would end up as a township manager, and, and I had the pleasure of working uh, next to Chris in many capacities. But again, I, from the bottom of my heart, for my staff, um, I'll be seeing, seeing them and doing my personal thank yous, um, as well as the members of this board. I wouldn't have not, you know, for you allowing me to, to manage the way I manage and to get these things done, we, we, you're, you're the reason why I've been successful. So I'll be seeing you over the next two weeks. Thank you. So at the end of each meeting, Larry walks down this aisle and he makes sure that all the chairs are at the right height. So this will be your last night, Larry. So you have to, can you, can you, can you, can you get over that? But you leave, maybe the chairs won't be at the same height. I'll, I'll be here at this commissioner meeting. <laughs> shaking my head. Okay. He's, commissioner, he's assigned somebody to do that job for me. For yeah, you. you think about who you want to assign that to, that, that task. Maybe the commissioners can do it themselves. Uh, Chief's going to do it, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you all. And if no other business, we stand adjourned. Thank you.